and they run into each other searching for the key. In this production, it's done very beautifully because they, it's like it's a game between the two of them. And I don't want to give it away, but it's, 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 it's very, very natural and very uh, brings a smile to your face. But he, um, he feels her hand for the first time and he says how cold her hand is. And, um, and the aria is accompanied by also by moonlight. But it's, it's just, um, if you listen to the harp play this, So when he's not singing. Now you'll hear that music over and over and over again. You'll hear it at the end of Act One. You'll hear it when Mimi dies at the very end of the opera. Which brings me to the point, the nostalgia at the memory of wonderful moments is so much a part of this opera. Um, I don't have time to go through the whole opera tonight, but if we hear the, the two arias, in other words, they're where the two characters introduce themselves, um, he says, what do I do? Well, I live, I'm, I'm a poet, um, I write, how do I live? I live, and, but in my happy poverty, I like, I spend like a great sir. Um, I, I write rhymes and hymns of love, and I have, and I think of illusions and castles in the air, and, and I've got the soul of a millionaire. He has nothing, but somehow inside him he feels he's a rich man. And just now, um, the two eyes that walked in um, stole um, all, took all the jewels away from my, from my box. In other words, all his, his ideas, his inspirations were just robbed by these two eyes that walked in, her eyes, of course. So, incredibly poetic and, and, and um, totally right for somebody who's a poet. He, um, he goes up to a phrase where he talks about sweet hope and it's, it's a beautiful, Phrase and goes up to the high C and it's and it's um, but it it's we and it's a. Uh, but we will have already heard that phrase, earlier on, in his very very first ut utterance. He goes. So what Puccini's doing is he's foreshadowing so much of the music that you're going to hear, and you don't even know that it's happening, but you hear these tunes over and over and over and over again. When Mimi um, introduces herself, uh, she says, yes, my name is Mimi, but my real name is Lucia. And her aria, much less confident, um, she hesitates all the time. The aria stops and starts because she doesn't, She's never really had to explain who she is to anyone, really, or in this intimate a situation. And, um, and she's shy. My story is short. I, I'm a seamstress, and I'm tranquil and happy, and, and I, make, I, I sow lilies and uh, um, roses. And I like those things that have a, a sweet... Um, Poetry. She, she says, that speak of love, of springtime. She goes on um, to, to tell us that she lives upstairs, but she's, um, she, she, she's lucky because she gets the first sun of April, of springtime. And so the connection to nature for her is very, very important. She's a very, very natural girl. She doesn't have her head in the clouds like like the tenor does, um, but, oh yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, the tenor, I, I get that, that. <laughs> I apologize, Michael, but, uh, <laughs> but she's a dreamer anyway, she's a, she's a, she's a poetic soul, but through nature, beautiful, and she, she finishes the aria as, as shyly as she starts it, I'm sorry for, for disturbing you, I'll leave now, um, she stays, and they have a, 
a beautiful duet. He turns to her and he says, what a beautiful girl you are. And his, the theme of that uh, duet Very interesting that it goes into the minor there. Go ahead. So he develops that. But we will have heard that melody in his aria. But it does something else. talks about her gorgeous eyes. Huh? So again, foreshadowing, using melody, but transformed, transfigured, developed melody. <laughs> 